again to the Medical Terminology Podcast. This episode is Chapter 4, Part 4, Pathologies of Motion and Function. There are four major categories of pathologies that we're going to be discussing. Those relating to tone, those relating to coordination, those relating to muscle function, and those relating to paralyses. The first group is those relating to tone. Do you remember what tone is? Well, tone is the balanced tension between contraction and relaxation that we find in a muscle. And do you remember what the word part for tone is? Well, that's tono, T-O-N slash O. So all of these terms relating to tone pathologies will have the combining form tono in them. The first one is atonic, A-T-O-N. I C. The prefix A means without, and the suffix IC means pertaining to. So atonic means a situation where one is without muscle tone. We have to be careful of that prefix A as it's described in the textbook because it will say again something like uh, the lack of something. Well, when they mean lack of, they mean it's not there. A means completely without. So we're talking about without muscle tone. Now interestingly enough, this term is generally used in association with a sleep disorder. In normal sleep, we go into a very deep state of sleep called REM sleep, R-E-M, which stands for rapid eye movement. Now in this very deep state of sleep, our bodies actually are paralyzed there is this disconnection that occurs between the body and the brain. Well, as we wake up and emerge from this deep REM sleep state, it is possible for the reconnection of the body and the brain to be delayed so that one can actually become conscious and be paralyzed. And this condition is generally referred to as atonia. Now the next term is dystonia. D-Y-S-T-O-N-I-A. In this case we have the prefix dis. Dis means bad or difficult. So dystonia literally means uh, a condition of bad or difficult muscle tone. Generally speaking, dystonia is a broad class of disorders relating to muscle tone where the muscle may be contracted and relaxed at the same time. What happens is there's a competition between those antagonistic muscle pairs. Remember, one has to contract while the other relaxes. One relaxes while the other contracts. Well, if they don't cooperate with each other, it can create this situation of dystonia. And what can happen is an arm or a limb can be twisted around into a weird position. That would be a dystonia. We often see this, for example, in people who have cerebral palsy, or sometimes it happens in cases of Parkinson's disease or the various muscular dystrophies. The next term is hypotonia, H-Y-P-O-T-O-N-I-A. Hypo means decreased or reduced. Someone with hypotonia has less than normal muscle tone. Someone with hypotonia is going to tend to be floppy, not be able to hold muscles in certain positions because they're just going to flop around. They won't maintain a normal state of tone, a normal state of contraction. 
Hypertonia, H-Y-P-E-R-T-O-N-I-A, is the opposite. Hyper means too much. So hypertonia literally means a condition of too much muscle tone. We can associate hypertonia with spasticity. There are various neuromuscular diseases where the muscles will spasm and tighten up. That would be a situation of hypertonia. And then we have myotonia. M-Y-O-T-O-N-I-A. Literally, that would mean a condition of muscle tone. But actually, myotonia is used to mean a specific condition of slow relaxation after a voluntary contraction. One might contract a muscle voluntarily, but then find that it does not want to relax or that it will relax but it takes a period of a few minutes before it will relax. It slowly relaxes. That is myotonia. Slow relaxation of a muscle after voluntary contraction. The next one is myoclonus. M-Y-O-C-L-O-N-U-S Myoclonus means a twitching of a muscle. It would be kind of like a tick, let's say. And finally we have a term that is a good example of a type of myoclonus, and that is singultus. S-I-N-G-U-L-T-U-S. Singultus is a medical term for the hiccups. And the hiccups are actually caused by a twitching or spasming of the diaphragm. Okay, that covers the terms related to muscle tone. Now we have some terms related to coordination or voluntary movement. The ability to control voluntary movement. Do you remember the combining form that refers to voluntary movement? Well, that's taxo, T-A-X slash O. So terms relating to that are going to have that combining form in them. The first term is ataxia, A-T-A-X. I-A. Ataxia literally means without the ability to control voluntary movement. Someone with ataxia will exhibit unsteady or jerky muscle mo movements. They may also have an unsteady gait, which means that they have an impaired ability to walk. Ataxia usually is caused by some kind of abnormal activity in the cerebellum of the brain or in a problem with the connection between the cerebellum and the motor neurons. The next term is dystaxia, D-Y-S-T-A-X-I-A. -A. Dystaxia literally means difficulty with controlling voluntary movement. In practice, dystaxia is a less severe form of ataxia. While in ataxia, there's no ability to control voluntary movements. In dystaxia, there's some ability to control movement or it may come and go, but it's a milder form of ataxia. The third term is contracture, C O N T R A C. T-U-R-E. A contracture is a permanent tightening of a muscle that's usually caused by a lack of use. The third group of terms relate to muscle function or the ability to move. Do you remember the word part that refers to movement? Well, that's kinesio, K-I-N-E-S-I slash O. 
Now the first term is bradykinesia, B-R-A-D-Y-K-I-N-E-S-I-A. Brady is a new prefix. It refers to slowness. So bradykinesia means slowness in movement. The next term is dyskinesia, D-Y-S. K-I-N-E-S-I-A. Dyskinesia would mean literally a difficulty in movement. In practice, dyskinesias are a variety of disorders that are characterized by jerky or repetitive involuntary motions. The next term is hyperkinesia, H-Y-P-E-R. K-I-N-E-S-I-A. Hyperkinesia means excessive muscular activity. Hyperkinesia also means hyperactivity, and that term is usually associated with children with, say, attention deficit disorder or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And finally, we have hypokinesia, H-Y-P-O. K-I-N-E-S-I-A, and hypokinesia would mean diminished function or movement. Someone with hypokinesia is not moving around as much as normal. Now the fourth and last group of pathologies relate to paralyses. Do you remember the suffix that refers to paralysis? Well, that's plegia, hyphen P-L-E-G-I-A. And there are several types of paralysis that are described in the textbook. The first one is hemiplegia, H-E-M-I-P-L-E-G-I-A. Hemiplegia refers to one half of the body being paralyzed. And this would be the body split down the midline. So it's either the left side or the right side is paralyzed. And this would usually happen as a result of some brain injury where one side of the brain is injured and the other is not. The next term is paraplegia. P-A-R-A-P-L-E-G-I-A. Paraplegia means both legs and the lower body is paralyzed. And finally, we have quadriplegia. Quadra refers to four, and so with quadriplegia, all four extremities are going to be paralyzed, both legs, both arms. And we need to be careful of the spelling of this word. Quadriplegia is Q-U-A-D-R-I-P-L-E-G-I-A. We often pronounce it as if that I is an A. We say quadriplegia, but it's spelled quadriplegia. So we do need to be careful of that. And then we have terms that relate to not total paralysis, but a partial paralysis or say a weakness. And the suffix that refers to partial paralysis or weakness is paresis, hyphen P-A-R-E-S-I-S. The first term is myoparesis, M-Y-O-P-A-R-E-S-I-S. Myoparesis refers to a weakness or partial paralysis of a muscle. And finally, we have hemiparesis, H-E-M-I-P-A-R-E-S-I-S. Hemiparesis would mean a slight weakness or paralysis in one half of the body. Well, okay, we have gone through quite a few terms here, and hopefully I've clarified them for you and you've got some idea of how they are different from one another or how they relate to one another. And so now I'm going to go ahead and do some practice with you. Number one. What is the term for the condition 
of abnormally slow movement. That's bradykinesia, B-R-A-D-Y-K-I-N-E-S-I-A. What is the term for a lack of normal muscle tone? That's atonia, A-T-O-N-I-A. What is the term for a permanent tightening of a muscle caused by a lack of use? That's a contracture, C-O-N-T-R-A-C-T-U-R-E. And what is the term for a weakness or slight paralysis in a muscle? That's myoparesis, M-Y-O-P-A-R-E-S-I-S. -S. And what is the term for someone who has paralysis in all four extremities? That's quadriplegia, Q-U-A-D-R-I-P-L-E-G-I-A. -E and what is the term for the condition in which someone lacks control over voluntary movement? This lack of control or coordination is often associated with some kind of disorder of the cerebellum. That's ataxia, A-T-A-X-I-A. -A -A. And what is the term for excessive movement or motion? Oftentimes, it's called hyperactivity. That's hyperkinesia. H-Y-P-E-R-K-I-N-E-S-I-A. And what is the term for a general set of disorders in which the contrasting muscle pairs will not cooperate, which causes an arm or another body part to twist into an odd position? Well, this disorder is dystonia, D-Y-S-T-O-N-I-A, which literally means difficult or bad muscle tone. But in this case, it refers to that weird twisting of limbs because the muscles are contracting improperly. What is the term for someone who's paralyzed in one half of the body? Usually it's the left side or the right side. That's hemiplegia, H-E-M-I-P-L-E-G-I-A. What is the term for a milder form of ataxia that just involves some difficulty in controlling muscle motion? That's dystaxia, D-Y-S-T-A-X-I-A. What is the medical term for the hiccups? That's singultus. 
S I N G U L T U S. And what is the term for an abnormal decrease in movement? Often this could be associated with a psychiatric disorder, or it could also be associated with someone who's been bedridden and ill for quite some time. That's hypokinesia, H-Y-P-O-K-I-N-E-S-I-A. And what is the term for a condition where muscles are abnormally resistant to stretching? That's hypertonia, H-Y-P-E-R. T-O-N-I-A, a condition of excessive muscle tone. What is the term for a condition when someone is par paralyzed in both legs and the lower part of the body? Well, that's paraplegia, P-A-R-A-P-L-E-G-I-A. What is the term for involuntary, jerky, or repetitive muscle motions? That's dyskinesia, D-Y-S-K-I-N-E-S-I-A. And what is the term for a condition in which the muscles are so relaxed that they cannot properly hold the body up. That's hypotonia, H-Y-P-O-T-O-N-I-A. This ends this episode of the Medical Terminology Podcast.